Last week I did a video on oil and I stated that I believe that there's going to be an oil shock like we saw in 2007-2008 and in addition to that I just need to disclose that I am short oil right now for a trade. I do believe after looking at it right now I did get in a bit too early because of the cold weather. I think that maybe I should have waited a buck or two more. But put that aside, I shorted I think around like a hundred point one or something like that, hundred dollars point one cents. I don't know. Somewhere around there. But anyways, I wanted to get into what one YouTube user asked me. He asked me, it's Ernie Veritimos, all of you probably have heard of him. And he asked me, what does a Fed fund rate have to do with oil? That's a good question. And what I replied, I was too lazy to write out a long response. I just stated that negative real rates equals higher oil and gold prices. So whenever you see negative real interest rates in the economy, you most likely see sophisticated investors take their dough and put it into commodities just as a hedge against inflation. And this is a long story short. Now I'm going to get into what these academics have talked about regarding negative real interest rates. And then we could just look at gold in relation to negative real interest rates as well. Right now I want to go into this one paper by Larry Summers. It is called, if we could look at the top, Gibson's Paradox and the Gold Standard. And this is a very long paper, and I just wanted to break down a few parts of this paper. And um, later on in this paper, it goes on. I just try to find the best information to show how negative real interest rates, according to the author, would lead to higher gold prices. Or we could see where he states that in his paper, and then I could talk a little more about it and show some graphs. The famous positive correlation between prices and interest rates seen in two centuries of data appears far less mysterious when thought of as a negative equilibrium relationship between the real price of gold and real interest rate. In this paper, we have presented evidence along several dimensions for the view that this may be a fruitful approach to understanding the Gibson correlation. Strong co-movement between the inverse relationship excuse me, inverse relative price of gold and other metals on the other hand and the real interest rate on the other characterizes non-gold standard years as well. So we can see in this article printed by a young Larry Summers and what he stated was that hey there's a negative relationship between real interest rates and gold prices so if you have negative real interest rates that would mean that you have either the central bank, this is after the gold standard by the way, so you have the Federal Reserve, their interest rates are lower than what the market rates proposing, right? We've seen that throughout history but I'll get more into that later on. But if Wall Street determines that you have negative real interest rates then you're gonna see sophisticated investors take their money and hedge against inflation by buying gold and silver. That's the simple way out of it. And they just want to protect their rear ends and gold would be part of the situation. And I actually found this paragraph, or found this paragraph, not paragraph, but paper off of Gata, right? And Gata's thesis, I mean, a lot of people tell me off air that Bill Murphy is a crackpot, or you see that all the time. And what Bill Murphy is saying that, hey, guess what? They're manipulating the gold by controlling the interest rates. They're trying to show that, hey, rates are positive or Wall Street perceives them as positive, and that's how they hammer gold and silver prices down. So regardless of whether you agree with Bill Murphy, this is what he thinks. And this is part of the way that he believes that they rig the gold and silver market. And my opinion on the gold and silver market, they manipulate up, down, sideways, whatever, right? I really don't care about that anymore. I just want to make money trading now. This is a different me now from maybe a few years ago. I used to complain a lot and I'm like, whatever. And I'm going to show you some other charts showing that 
how Wall Street may perceive the price of gold and when they may want to buy, when they may want to sell. Now getting to the concept of maybe negative real rates and positive real rates and a few other features. Now let's look at this one chart that I made and it's showing the tips yield versus the gold price, right, since 2007-ish, right? And I see a inverse relationship and there should be an inverse relationship for the most part. In the blue you can see the tips yield and in the red you could see the price of gold. This is as of like January, I don't know, sometime in January. So hovering around the $1200 range. And if you look at it, right, you could see a negative real, I mean you could see a negative relationship and what is the tips yield, right? It's a hedge against inflation you could say and how do you calculate this rate? And based on what I saw, the way that you could calculate how tips yield is calculated, right, this line in the blue, you take the treasury bond yield minus the expected inflation rate. So as you can see, when the gold price started to rise in 2011-ish, right, you saw really, really low tips yield. So that meant that the treasury yield the 10 year treasury minus the expected inflation was negative, right? And all of a sudden, in the past year or so, we've started to see the tips yield start to be positive. So that means that the 10 year was greater than the expected inflation. Now, some people may say that, hey, they could manipulate it via the expected inflation rate, right? Whatever people want to say manipulation or not this is how Wall Street operates it looks like or sophisticated investors non gold bugs by the way and what they say is okay if the expected inflation rate or I mean if the tips yield goes down right into negative territory maybe it may be a good trade to buy gold right I mean look at this over here I mean you see the tips yield at three percent so the Treasury was greater than the expected inflation rate, right? It must have been negative inflation. That was probably what was going on at that time with the 10-year probably low. This is the 10-year, by the way, tips yield. So you could see over here, 3%, close to 3% tips yield, gold price really low. And I tried to show this in one video I did last year, and people were like kind of not ticked off. I lost 10 subscribers in that video, by the way, because I said that, hey, you know what? If we see a deflationary head fake, I wouldn't be surprised if the price of gold goes to levels that are unheard of, right? I gave levels. This is just for a short period of time where it could potentially go down to 2008 levels. I said temporarily. Not now, but probably in the few years. That's what I said. And then a lot of people, I saw some angry comments there, but I was just going off of the tip shield. I didn't show the gold price correlated or inversely correlated with the tip shield, by the way. Long story short, so when you see tip shield high like that, it may be a good opportunity to buy gold. And if you see it at a negative bottoming out process, you know what? Time to sell. That's where the smart money was. I wasn't part of the smart money 2011 to 2012-ish. But that's what ended up happening. But regardless, this graph for the past five years has been dead on accurate, inverse relationship. So long story short, you see negative real interest rates and Wall Street perceives the rates to be negative and they also look at expected inflation rates. You know what? This graph may be handy for some traders wanting to capitalize on the gold prices. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work all the time, but for the past five years, seems to be an inverse relationship for the most part. Anyways, guys, thanks for listening to me. Leave your comments below. Talk to you later. Bye.